Hello, it's me, Teresa. I love traveling with Lamot. This time I am going to Suicis Ecclesiente, the oldest part of Sardinia. On my second trip, I wanted to do a real tour through Italy and discover really unusual things. Lamat suggested to me, go to the social cooperative San Lorenzo. You will discover a Sardinia that you never knew existed. One can go by train from Cagliari to Iglesias in about an hour. I hired a car so that I could be independent. Despite my detailed map, I soon found myself lost traveling between one unpronounceable village and the other. Before me lie deserted streets, quiet, shimmering, even secretive and sometimes slightly unsettling landscapes. I live in Walter's house in the heart of Villa Mazarcha, near to Iglesias. Walter opens up the completely unknown world of Terra Cruda to me. I am Walter Seci. Here we are in my new house of Terra. He tells me that the simple house made of clay fascinated him already as a child. A while back, he got the opportunity to buy the house. He renovated it using the original clay adobe house building technique. He wanted to live there himself and run it as a bed and breakfast. Walter, who was also mayor of the village, has for a long time now dedicated himself to the revival of terra cruda, an ancient art of construction using simply clay, straw and water to build houses. The society of the Terra Cruda community that we would visit the next day, amongst other things, also promotes courses for architecture students. Walter tells me a little more about the growing importance of Terra Cruda. The following day, I finally visit the cooperative San Lorenzo in Iglesias. On the way there, I am moved by the impressions of Porto Vesma and the remains of an abandoned mine, a damaged and scarred landscape left over after an industrial era. For ages, people have come to the island with reckless disregard for the culture and the landscape for the purpose of exploiting the labor of the inhabitants and the bounty of the environment. It must all change, says Giuseppe, the president of the cooperative. We need more than just jobs. We need to establish a new culture. And so it happened that in 2011, the cooperative San Lorenzo bought the deserted factory, which was once owned by a multinational company. They manufacture all their building products out of natural, raw materials. An adobe clay from Terra Cruda, clay plaster, and insulation made of sheep's wool. And thus, a new culture is emerging. Slowly but surely, I comprehend the sheer magnitude of the project. A total Lamat factory has emerged. In a completely new way, the local resources are used in the production cycle. The landscape, the history, people with their abilities and passion, even the weak are participating. Everything is being incorporated, including waste products and the remains of the former exploiters. In Sant Antiochus harbour, I meet Angelo, the captain of the Sara Quattro. And he tells me that the ship was in a terrible condition. Now it is accessible for wheelchairs. 
which means that even those living on the island with a wheelchair now have the opportunity to get away from the island and cross the sea. One can hardly believe that it had once been used for drug smuggling. After it had been confiscated, it was ceded to the cooperative. Angelo is a master fisherman and contributes his passion to the project of San Lorenzo. Eh, in più noi, visto che nel territorio non, nessuna barca fa questo servizio, offriamo Angelo la says that they are the only ones here who are able to offer this possibility. Everyone here can learn to fish and get to know the sea and its currents. On board Sara Quattro, people really feel comfortable and at ease. The next day I meet Alessandro, who accompanies me to the mountains and the woods of Linas Marganay Nature Park. We went through the woods, climbed to the old mountain rescue service, crossed the former mining village, San Benedetto, and passed the goats and sheep. San Lorenzo will soon be running a hostel, a friendly retreat where butterflies meet in the middle of an ore bearing ring of limestone and dolomite, rich in sulfur, iron, zinc and lead. Salve, sono Alessandro. Sono la Alessandro guida introduces himself della as the guide of the woods of Marganai. He says that besides the notably rich plant life, there is a beautiful butterfly garden. garden. But today, because of the weather, there are not many butterflies about. Alessandro leads me through the mountain paths and caves, across the slaty sandstone, formed millions of years ago as an archaic place where people have been digging for minerals for thousands of years. We then get to the Temple of Antas, about 20 kilometers north of Iglesias, which has served as a place of worship even long before the Romans. From Flumini Maggiore we head down to Pugero. Deserted beaches stretch before us and the sea surges against the steep cliffs, telling us ancient stories. And then past Mazua with its deserted mines of Porto Flavio and the little island Pandizucaro. During the following days I explore the lower part of Sulcis. I find myself thinking of scenes from New Mexico. San Lorenzo works together with many communities doing simple services. I find out a little about the village Tatalias, its resettlement and its connection to the man-made lake of Monteprano. San Lorenzo will soon be running a little hostel here too. I travel through Masainas to the shores of Solanas. With the ocean in the background and surrounded by fields, I find the graves of the giants, a prehistoric gravesite and Nuraga. On every corner there is something to be discovered. In Isloche Santos, I once again encounter Terra Cruda.
the San Lorenzo introduces me to a group of guides who know their way around the area. Ciao Teresa, io sono Rosalia, mi fa piacere conoscerti. Ciao Teresa, io sono Luca e non vedo l'ora di incontrarti. Ciao Teresa, io anch'io sono Luca e non vedo l'ora di presentarti il nostro territorio. Ciao Teresa, io sono Andrea. They tell me stories about the village, about the lack of work, but that they are going to keep working at it nonetheless. Va così e si estrae il pane. As I get to know them better, I even get to meet Luca's grandmother. Rosalia, Monica, Andrea, Luca and Luca do not want to leave their homes or immigrate elsewhere to look for work. Together with San Lorenzo and Lamat, they want to help travelers like myself discover the beauty and secrets of this place, with its abundance of stories, history and possibilities. I spent my last evening in Carbonia, a city which was the brainchild of Mussolini, a city built to provide housing for the workforce of the nearby coal mines and which has survived its original purpose. During the last two weeks I experienced so much and became acquainted with many people. My passion for Zulcis is irreversibly ignited and because I know that there is much more to discover about it, I will definitely be back. Eia Amarola, as they say in Sardinia, where a simple yes does not exist. Grazie Lamat for the exciting and inspiring journey with you.